uh, the illustrious West Elm, a high-end furniture store that sells trendy furniture for a premium. Let's take a look at an example. Here's this lofted oak dresser. It retails for 1,699 USD. That's like 182 Chipotle burritos. I'm guessing the sink's made out of gold, right? Um, no. Okay, so it is made out of oak veneer, engineered wood top, frame, and drawers. Welcome to the dupe challenge, where the goal is to transform a secondhand piece of furniture into a high-end duplicate or twin, or maybe even like a cousin. Special shout out to No Can Do for hosting this challenge. The playlist and a link to her channel will be linked below in the description. Here we have a $25 solid pine dresser that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. The shape is right. She's a little round on the edges, but that's okay. The finish is very orange, and there's a lot of discolored areas and dents and dings. Interestingly, the top appears to be joined together with what I believe to be small sliding dovetails. Very cool. This is probably how the top stayed together so tightly. Looking at the drawers though, they were nailed together. My guess is this is a homemade piece. We'll start off by taking the knobs off. Definitely a vintage style. The bottom knob appears to have been chewed on at some point, but I'll save these for later just in case I need them for something else. My normal process is to strip or scrape the finish, but the finish on this appears to be relatively thin, so I'm going to sand it off. Before I do that, I'm going to clean everything with crud cutter, so I'm not pushing any of those oils or dirt further into the surface while I'm sanding. There were a few spots on the inside of the drawers that appeared to be pretty stained. One of them had some residue left on it, so I used a magic eraser to try to get some of that residue off. This did not do much to get rid of the stain, so we'll try to sand it out next. On the left side of the dresser, there was some separation happening between the two solid wood pieces. I used my wood clamps to see if I could compress the two sides back together. The pieces didn't move though, so the split is likely stable. And to fix this, I'm just going to use some natural wood filler and fill the gap. If the two pieces had moved, I would have used wood glue and clamps to bring them back together and let that dry overnight. Since pine is such a soft wood, there were a lot of dents and scratches on the dresser carcass, especially the top, so I went ahead and filled those in before sanding as well. I used my 3M Cubitron 120 grit sandpaper for my first round of sanding. The sandpaper is like sand net in that it lasts a little bit longer than regular sandpaper. I sanded everything down. This was probably the longest part of the entire project. All of the sides of the drawers and the entire carcass of the dresser were sanded with 120 grit sandpaper.
I noticed the top of the dresser had a thicker finish on it than I had originally anticipated, so I used my two and a half inch carbide scraper to scrape the sides before sanding them down to bare wood. A frequent question that I'm asked is why don't I just sand instead of using a scraper or stripper and then sanding? First of all, sanding creates a lot of dust, which isn't a big deal if you have dust collection, but I don't. Any finishes that are thicker can be thinned out by just simply scraping them with a carbide scraper, which will save you a lot of sandpaper and time. When I can't use my scraper on, for example, thicker finishes, or if there's a lot of detail on the surface, that's when I'll use a paint stripper. Paint stripper's messy, so if I can use my carbide scraper, that is generally what I gravitate towards. After I removed the finish from the dresser, I mixed up some oxalic acid. Make sure you take proper safety procedures when using this as a wood bleach. I applied one coat of oxalic acid to the entire dresser to try to remove some of the dark stains and lighten up the yellowy pine color that was coming through. And after the first coat dried, I decided to apply another one because I still had a lot of dark stains coming through. The new legs we're going to be adding for this dresser require some modifications be made to the bottom of the dresser carcass. I cut some scrap poplar I had from a previous project and used smaller hobby board scraps to make a new base for the new legs to screw into. The top center split for the drawers was loose, so I added some wood glue and clamped that down to secure it. The nails in the drawers were dragging on the inside of the body. I nailed them to below the wood substrate on the drawers, and then I applied wood filler over top of them. I sanded everything yet again with 150 grit sandpaper. A lot of staining and discoloration was still in the drawers and did not go away even after applying oxalic acid and sanding twice. I'll fix this later. I cleaned everything off with a tack cloth to remove any dust or debris that was left on the dresser. And then I applied pre-stain conditioner over the entire dresser. I 
I chose Minwax Pickled Oak for the stain. This seemed to be the closest color match to what I saw in the picture. However, this did not work out too well. I ended up applying two coats, allowing it to dry in between, and the color still wasn't what I wanted. The West Elm dresser shows a bit more of a brown tone and there were pink undertones coming through the stain. So I decided to go rogue and try something different. I mixed my high performance satin water based poly with a tinted mixture of Carts and Millie driftwood stain and sea spray paint, all of which are water based. This worked out really well and I was able to color correct everything using just two thin coats of this. While waiting for my poly coats to dry on the dresser, I decided to try dark walnut Danish oil on the inside of the drawers. I've had this laying around forever. I figured this would be a good time to try it out. So what I'm doing is I just apply one coat using a foam brush and then you come back and you wipe off the excess. I only had to apply one coat, but this seemed to conceal any of the weird discolored parts of the drawers. My final coat of finish was a clear coat of the water-based poly and once it was fully dry, I sanded the final coat with an 800 grit sandpaper to remove any particulates that may have landed in it while it was drying. Finally, we just need to attach the hardware. I ended up moving the legs further apart than what you're seeing in the video, but it's the same concept of pre-drilling your holes and making sure that your screws are snug. Okay, so let's see how we did. Now, I still think the color could have been a bit more brown, but even without any major structural changes, the cost to purchase and modify this dresser came in a bit over $100. Make sure you check out the other dupe challenge pieces using the playlist link in the description, and I'll see you next time.